Let's consider convergence of a series in more detail. There's actually different degrees on how a series might converge. When you take a look at a series and you take all the negative terms and make them positive, essentially what you're doing is looking at the series of absolute values on your terms. And if that series converges, then the original series gets a special type of convergence called absolutely convergent. Okay, now the convergence that we used to discuss, this, this will include this. Okay, so, so absolute convergence will imply convergence, no doubt. But this is just a, a special type of convergence, a, a more strict um, type of convergence. Not every series is going to do this. Now, it's possible that when you take the absolute value of the terms, it's possible that you can get divergence. Okay, but then that doesn't mean that the original series automatically diverges. When you go back to the original series with the negatives in there, and you use maybe the alternating series test on it, and you know the alternating series test only gives the affirmative convergence, if, if somehow the alternating series tells you convergence while the absolute value told you divergence, then that's called another type of convergence. And so when you take the absolute value and get divergence, but then you go back to the original and try the alternating series test on it or some other test. Uh, most likely it's the alternating series test. But um, if that turns around and tells you convergence, it's not like they're disagreeing. It's just a different type of convergence. That type of convergence is called conditional convergence. Okay. When you take the positive terms and you get divergence, but you take the original series with all the positive and the negatives and you somehow recover convergence, that's called conditional convergence. Uh, I made a flow chart there which will help. So you start off considering the series where all the negatives turn positive. Essentially this is called the, the series of absolute values. If that converges, then that makes the original series have the special title of being absolutely convergent. And in turn, then we can say just our standard type of convergence that we said before. Now, when that series of absolute values diverges, the story isn't over there. What we need to do is look at the original series without the absolute values in there, throw the negatives um, back on and consider some other test. If, for instance, on the original series, you try the alternating series test and you get convergence, then that type of convergence is called conditionally convergent. If for some reason you try the test for divergence and you get divergence, there's no different degree of divergence. Divergence will be just divergence. And so these are our different options. The series could be absolutely convergent. The series could be conditionally convergent. Or the series could be divergent. We have to make this distinction now about how the convergence works with the series. Let's take a look at three examples. First up, we have the cosine of n pi all over the root of n cubed. Okay, remember what cosine n pi does. Cosine n pi is a fancy way of alternating sign. Okay, so when we take the absolute value, then the ones and minus ones just turn into all ones. Okay, now please don't get too confused. I have some students that'll tell me that this series is n to the one third power. It's not. It's n cubed to the half power, or n to the three halves underneath the uh, in the denominator there. Anyway, this is a series which we can tell directly right away whether or not it converges or diverges because of the format that it's in. 
it's a P series and it converges because P is greater than one. Okay, great. So we took the absolute value of all the terms and we got convergence. So we say that the original series is absolutely convergent. Let's take a look at example number two. Alternating sign, but now over the square root of n. When we take the absolute value of all the terms, that drops off the negatives and makes them positive. But this series is n to the one-half power. This is a divergent p series. Right? p is less than one. So we took the absolute values and we had divergent. The story isn't over. Let's try the alternating series test on it. What do you need to do for the alternating series test? You take a look at the part that's not the alternating. We call that B sub n. And two things need to be true. The B sub n needs to be decreasing as a sequence. And the limit on that sequence needs to be equal to 0. And that's true for this particular sequence. The bigger the denominator gets, the smaller the term will get. And so that means that we get the decreasing part. And definitely as n gets large, uh, that um, the terms will get smaller and smaller. It goes to 0. So we, we have these two properties satisfied. That's all you need for the alternating series test to tell you convergence. And so then we get the special type of convergence on the original series. That's called conditionally convergent. In general, if you have a p-series that, that where, where you have divergent, then when you put the alternating on it, you'll get convergence, but that's a special kind of convergence, conditional convergence. Okay, and the third example will be negative 4 to the n plus 1 all over 3 to the n. Take the absolute value. Uh, this, this alternates, although it doesn't look like it. You can think about it as negative 1 times 4, the entire thing, to the n plus 1. And so it's negative 1 to the n plus 1 times 4 to the n plus 1. You can apply the exponents across there only because it's multiplied inside. And so you, it does alternate. It's not as obvious as these other guys. Well, that cosine n pi isn't very obvious, but hopefully at some point it will be uh, to you. And so... When we, when we throw the absolute value bars on each term, then what that does is that just disregards the, the alternating sign and just gives us the 4 to the n plus 1. Okay. Now what this does, we have to take a close look at it. Um, I would say not to algebraically manipulate it. You can algebraically manipulate it, but let's see what happens. When n is 1, we're talking about 4 squared over 3. And when n is 2... We're talking about 4 cubed over 3 squared, 4 to the 4th over 3 cubed, and so on. These are powers of 4 divided by powers of 3. Each time you multiply by 4 thirds. So this is a geometric series. It's a geometric series, but with r equal to 4 thirds. What does that mean to you? When you have a geometric series where the absolute value of r is greater than 1, then you get divergence. So when you take the absolute value bars and you get divergence, the story's not over yet. You put them back on, and it's possible that you could still get convergence. We saw it here. All right, let me uh, skip to the animation. You don't have to manipulate the, the algebra, algebraically manipulate the, the series like that. Just write out the first few terms and you'll see. Whenever you see numbers raised to the n powers, then, then that's a good idea to use the geometric series. Or you could actually use a root test. Anyway, um, but the nature of how it diverged is important. And so when you put the alternating sign back on, the same thing is going to happen. It's still going to be divergent. Because the limit doesn't exist. See that r needed to be less than 1 for the limit to be 0. And uh, an absolute value that is. And uh, the r value here is negative 4 thirds. 
ultimately what happens is, you know, sometimes it's positive, sometimes it's negative. When when you uh, when you have a positive exponent, I'm sorry, when you have an odd exponent, then it's going to go to negative infinity, um, um, positive infinity. When you have an even exponent, I'm sorry, when you have an odd n, uh, n plus one is the exponent. So when you have a um, n odd, it's going to go to infinity. When you have n even, it's going to go to negative infinity. It doesn't exist. So the absolute value series diverged. The original series diverged. And so that's just divergence. There's no degree on divergence. Okay, so those are three examples. Actually ends up as one of each type.